what's the significance of the new moon and how can you use it in magic? Hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and if you are new to Wicca and witchcraft and you want to learn how to be a witch or a Wiccan, hit the subscribe button below so that you don't miss anything. This video is about the new moon and the energies of the new moon and how as witch or Wiccan you can celebrate the new moon and use the energy in your spellcraft. I did another video about the full moon and the energy of the full moon. This one is about the energy of the new moon. So the new moon technically is when you start to see that light in the sky. So the first view of the moon after it's gone through its dark cycle. And that's when the moon is starting to grow. So it start, it'll start to grow energetically the more it reflects the sun uh, through that two weeks before it reaches full moon. And that is the time for growth. It's the time for planting seeds. It's the time for doing spell work around things that you want to grow, things that you're wanting to sprout, things that you're wanting to give that nice, solid, growing phase energy to. So rather than it being a big bang, let's have it now, full moon uh, spell, your work, your goal, whatever it is you're doing magic for, may be better suited to a slower building or scaffolding approach to getting what it is that you want. And this is especially so if you're building something, like if you're building a business, if you are taking on a study program, if you are uh, changing or wanting to, to start a new career, anything that involves growth, time and other things to to happen in alignment with your goal in order for it to be fulfilled. So the new moon is really important. It's a really important time for spellcraft and it's it's that that waxing phase, that growing phase of the moon that most of the magic is done. I do most of my magic during that cycle rather than hitting it with the full moon uh, because it is generally about that that slowly slowly with a lot of things and the new moon is that time when you are being very focused on the building when the, the moon first appears in the sky at that new moon or the date that's on the calendar that says this is the new moon it's the moon will be in the same sign same astrological sign as the sun so that means if you are doing your spell work and it's the, the sun is in Virgo, the new moon will be in Virgo as well. So the energy that you're using to begin whatever or create whatever it is that you're creating for the spell is going to have the extra energy of Virgo. So it's going to have more organization. It's going to have perhaps more analysis. And if you're wanting to add those elements of the sun sign in with your spell work doing your spell on the new moon within that sign is going to be quite powerful because it's going to be very strongly in that sign so you can plan your magic that way as well of course you can do the same with the full moon because the full moon you've got the moon opposing the sun astrologically so if the sun is in Virgo the moon will be in Pisces so you're blending a very interesting energy of Pisces energy and Virgo energy to your spell work as well so that's another uh, aspect you can bring into your spells and the spells will be affected subtly by all of the astrological energy that's around whenever you're casting the spell the moon moves through the different sun signs every couple of days and there is and as it's moving in and as it's moving out the energies of that sign that it's moving in will affect it and it will either be very weak in that sign it'll get strong and then it'll become weak again there's periods in between when it's going from sign to sign when it's not actually in a sign it's in between signs and that is when they say that the moon is void of course now in magic it's generally if you're following it on that astrological aspect it's recommended that you check to see when the moon is void of course when it's not in a really in a sign it's sort of transitioning between signs 
and not to do magic during that time because the magic won't work um, or it might backfire. Um, that's another theory. There's also other theories there and I'll call them theories because I haven't actually taken them for a test drive. Like I haven't actually deliberately done a spell at that time to see if it's worked compared to doing a spell when it's in a, in a sign to actually find out. So I can't say 100% whether it's true. Um, there's another theory that I was taught in my coven that if you are going to be doing uh, any kind of spell work, you do not do it three days leading up to the new moon. So that's when the moon's going through the dark moon phase because similar to the moon void, of course, it, the magic will either not work or it will backfire. Now, I've never taken that for a test drive either, so I can't say from an experimental point of view whether that's true or not either, but it is something that I was taught. The moon void, of course, is something that a lot of people have um, adhered to. And if you have had experiences with experimenting with these things, uh, please let me know in the comments field because I'd love to hear uh, what your results were. Because I do believe that a lot of these things do need to be experimented with before we can actually say this is true. Because we can't just assume something's true because somebody says it is. Even if a whole lot of people agree that it's true, it doesn't necessarily mean it is. So we do need to, to take a bit of a scientific approach to these things as, at the same time to allow some, some reasoning and some common sense. So I'm not saying that the moon void, of course, is <clears throat> crap. I'm just saying that I have an experiment with it, so I don't know how true that is. I tend to do magic when I need to do magic, and I don't necessarily wait for certain times um, or wait for the next month or wait until you know, the moon and the sun are both in Leo um, to do something. If I need to do it, I do it. And I go with whatever happens as a result of that. I'm very practical with that. So that is uh, the new moon. The dark moon, because you can't see the moon, it is very much a time of that inner work. It's that time of going into the self, the shadow work, the work on looking at those aspects of ourselves that we uh, perhaps, I don't want to say change because that implies there's something wrong with us and there isn't actually anything wrong with us. We're not broken people. We're just conditioned or programmed through the influences of our culture, of the religion we grew up in, our tribe, our family, our schooling, to believing that we have to be a certain way or that we can't be a certain way or that it's not safe to express ourselves in a certain way. And those things can be things we don't like about ourselves or they can be what we call the, the shadow aspects of ourselves. So if we're wanting to release the, the things that are holding us back from truly expressing ourselves in the world, going in at the dark moon, the three days leading up to the full moon is a really good time to do that self-reflection and that shadow work. Divination, uh, scrying is really good to do at that time of the moon as well. So that's a little bit about the, the new moon as opposed to the full moon. And if you are stuck trying to figure out how to start your Wiccan or witchcraft practice, because I know there's a lot of people out there who are stuck because even though there's a lot of information out there, it's really hard to know where to start. I do have a free 20 minute video that you can watch that just gives you a, a roadmap that just helps you know how to pace yourself with your, with your study and how to sort of um, progress with what to learn first and how to structure it. So do take a look at that. It is free, so you can download that. The link is in the uh, description field below this video. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, blessed be. Mm -hmm.